Legendary fighter pilot Ari O'Reilly once said, give me a fully loaded Hornet and I'll shake the gates of heaven. Anvil Aerospace's Hornets have faced Vandal, Xion, pirates, and criminals. Tested in the harshest conditions, the Hornet has proven time and again its ability to withstand damage and still be able to dish it out. With all the punishment it handles on a daily basis, won't you think the new Hornet can handle yours? Honey, I got the ice cream you wanted. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve, otherwise known as Pin, and today we're going to talk about the excellent ship that is the Anvil F7C-M Super Hornet. It's a fantastic little ship. Um, really enjoy it. Packs quite a punch for its size, let me tell you, um, and it just looks cool. It, the, the Hornets are iconic, um, in my opinion, throughout the verse, and there are many variants of Hornet but today we will focus primarily on the F7CM Super Hornet. This ship is absolutely superb, it has some pluses that the others don't. Um, the big one being we do actually have an extra seat behind the pilot which will come in super useful I think in, in the future or for anyone that has a friend that is trying to get a friend into the verse um, this ship could be for you. The cockpit itself then as we take a look is very well spaced out everything is nice and easy to read um, you can see it's a hotel system we've got here even the flight stick itself has some sort of tiny targeting monitor on it which I think is just a nice little touch it doesn't do anything at the moment but I'm sure in the future to have a little MFD on the flight stick that operates could be really really cool um, You'll also notice there's loads of sort of peripheral buttons and switches and mini radar. I mean, this thing is dripping in gadgets, right? Um, on the right hand side, we've got even more small sort of control panels, um, stainless steel buttons. You name it, the Hornet's cockpit is dripping in things to touch, press, and do. I like that because who doesn't like pressing buttons and switches in? in cockpits and if you're a DCS player you know exactly what I'm talking about um, so it does look excellent in here on the left hand side again we have this um, some of the same but it's a very unique cockpit you don't see this much sort of um, interaction uh, in some of the other cockpits you know it's very sort of 
bare bones, so to speak. Um, but the cockpit of the Super Hornet is dripping in switches and buttons and mini radar screens, you name it, it's got it. The rear seat is pretty much just as cool. There is one MFD here, two sets of pedals and a flight stick which will control the turret for the rear gunner. Um, this is a great touch because if the pilot is engaging multiple targets, it is nice knowing that you can have someone in the back operating that turret, defending your ship while the pilot is allowed to focus on destroying what he's trying to kill. So that's a plus. He'll also have access to shields, navigation, um, which will also make things very nice and easy for the pilot just to concentrate on flying. So those are nice touches. Now I did read in the brochure that they, that they were considering, um, well not considering, this could be turned into a secure seat. So if you were to capture a bounty, for example, you would be able to strap them in this seat, secured, and transport them from processing, um, thus giving you a big payout for all your hard work. I haven't heard anything since on that. Um, I would like to, because I think that's an excellent idea for a solo bounty hunter. This ship straight away becomes really useful. You could also use this ship with this extra seat, um, with the right QT drive, if you were to um, make your character dress up as a medic, for example, so you've got all your medical supplies, there's no reason why you couldn't traverse the verse in the Super Hornet, dispensing aid and possibly picking people up. So for anyone that wanted to earn a little bit of extra cash, um, picking up stranded players and healing stranded players um, is an option, so long as you've got the right... Um, medical supplies on your person so that's a nice little touch as well now as you can see this super hornet bright white i actually really like the paint scheme it really stands out it looks really cool and really clean it is quite literally covered in weaponry so on the top you can see we have the ball turret with two weapons here the ball turret is modular so you can swap this out for different parts you can fit a size 4 weapon on here me personally i actually really like the stock loadout it does what it needs to do. The only thing I would change is probably the Gatlings, um, no, uh, located on the wingtips, which I they are gimbaled. This is a gimbaled loadout. Um, they're the only things I would consider um, changing. They do put out a ridiculous amount of DPS, uh, the Gatling guns, we know this, but I'm not keen on running out of ammo. Once the ammo's gone, yes, it's a pain in the butt. You have to go rearm. I might swap these for some repeaters, I think, or cannons, believe it or not. I kind of like cannons at the moment. Um, under the nose, we have a chin turret, which can also be swapped for a fixed size 3 weapon hardpoint. At the moment, it's two size 1 bulldogs. Again, I like the gimbal, you might not. Um, so you could have one fixed size 4 and three fixed size 3 weapons mounted to this spaceship which is a lot of DPS and a lot of fun. But because it's a sort of medium fighter, I actually just enjoy the pure gimbal dogfighting style of this ship. It's good fun. Like I said, the only thing I would change would be probably the Gatlings. The engine, we have one massive engine, which looks amazing and certainly pushes this Hornet through space with relative ease and through atmosphere, doesn't seem to struggle. It's not as fast accelerating as some of the other ships that we've got out there, um, I think. The Sabre, for example, is a light, handles like a light fighter. It's a bit quicker in acceleration and things like that, but there's no real complaints from me. This ship is still excellent, in my opinion. Great fun for anyone that hasn't tried it. Maybe you should try it. And if you really like it, maybe you should buy it, especially for that extra seat. I can see that coming into great use and money-making potential in the future. So, in atmosphere, great. It handles kind of sluggish. It's a medium fighter. It's not light fighter isk it's um the handling is in a good spot for this ship i would say i don't have any problems with it at all um problem with this ship now of course with the launch of the scorpius is well why would i take this over the scorpius and that's a good question because the scorpius has an extra seat it's a heavy fighter and almost certainly has more dps so it's tricky i have to admit it is tricky but there are some merits to the Super Hornet. Um, for example, we know that the Super Hornet is going to have tremendous armor. 
and it will take quite a beating. It does already. This ship is stock for me. Um, also, we don't have the um, the worry of losing weapons on wingtips as much as we do with the Scorpius, for example. We could lose both our wings with the weapons underneath and still be in a combat ready state, whereas the Scorpius takes any sort of damage and wings fall off, it's in trouble, if, especially if that turret isn't manned. So there are some pros and cons, but the Super Hornet is still an excellent addition to your fleet, and I would certainly consider getting one. I've had nothing but fun with this ship. In terms of its loadout and what I've equipped with it, I've played around with distortions on the Hornet Trekker with a similar loadout. Um, there are modules that can be swapped, you see, and I really don't think there's much in it. It sort of depends on what you want to do. Um, I prefer the all gimbaled, having tried all fixed on the Trekker. I just find it much easier to lock on kill targets with the gimbaled loadout just because they're lower sized weapons doesn't mean that the DPS decreases um, all that much and I do prefer it. Um, it does have three fuel tanks which is pretty handy so the range is fairly respectable uh, for QT and um, hydrogen fuel um, allowing it to get to places where others might not. Um, just a great great ship I've been thoroughly enjoying it and I think aesthetically it looks mean it's got reminiscence of of course Wing Commander um, that old, old school game that we all know and love, but the Super Hornet for me is the apex out of all of the Hornets and I've been thoroughly enjoying, uh, enjoying it as of late. So it has all military components, we have an abundance of weaponry, we have eight size one missiles that can be swapped and configured to a particular need that you're trying to tailor the ship for. If you don't have a co-pilot gunner, a CPG in the back, don't worry, you still have full access to all weaponry on board via the pilot seat, so that isn't a loss, don't worry, you're not going to have to have this crew to maximise the firing capabilities of this ship, so that overall it is a well-rounded combat vessel in my opinion. Okay, let's now discuss some of the stats. So the length is 25.50 meters. It has a beam of 24 meters, a height of 6.50 meters. Uh, SCM speed is 230 meters per second. Afterburner speed is 1220, roughly. I think I've hit 1228, actually. Um, pitch, 90 degrees. Yaw, 90 degrees. Roll, 130 degrees. So... In terms of some of the other Hornets, it's a little bit longer and a little bit sluggish and it's more than likely due to that extra seat. So those are things to be expected with the Super Hornet, but it doesn't affect its combat ability all too badly at all. Now this ship does have a very impressive combat history. From raids in Orion to asteroid patrols in Carthcart, the Hornet has faced every type of hostile environment with distinction, honour and most importantly, endurance. It is consistently rated as one of the most versatile and durable hulls ever created. Successfully lo logging thousands of combat missions, the Hornet has emerged as the iconic single pilot combat ship for the UEE military, offering a weapons payload capable of handling any kind of combat situation with a defensive package to match. To the enemy, it's a weapon never to be underestimated. To allies, it's a saviour. At its heart, the F7C Hornet is the same dependable and resilient multi-purpose fighter that has become the face of the UEE Navy. With a fully modular fuselage tested in the harshest battle conditions, the F7C is the foundation to build and meet whatever requirements you have in mind. From vicious dogfighter to rugged all-terrain spacecraft, the F7C Hornet has you covered through the darkest vacuum. So this is a very tough, cool and deadly little spaceship. 200 years of combat experience have moulded the interface between pilot and Hornet. The F7C features an array of shield monitors, each with a customizable interface to provide fast, accurate data to the operator in the way that you want them, when you need them. As soon as you step into the cockpit, you recognise why the Hornet can handle any kind of environment any kind of deployment, you will be part of the tradition that has carried humanity with the confidence throughout the verse. And there's also quite an interesting quote from a pilot of the Hornet. He was in a tracker and uh, this is sort of one of the missions that he was on in the verse according to the law. 
Command had given me a recon mission. Jumping into a vanguard had been toasty the past few weeks, so the brass seemed to think the vandal might be posted up to strip a planet. They pulled the turret off my hornet to free up space for the extra scanners. It was four hours in the system before I found the vandal. A host of five scythes came out to stomp me. They should have brought more. Even without my turret, my hornet could take whatever they dished out and still had the barrels to ghost them. That's a quote from Lieutenant Farah Isa. So that's uh, a pretty cool statement. So this guy's been, his uh, hornet's been swapped. Um, the turret's been swapped for the scanning dish. He's gone out looking for trouble. Trouble found him. And even with the turret missing, he has still managed to wreck several vandals. So that is quite an impressive achievement. The ship is just glorious in its history. So the Hornet in general does have some excellent modularity. You could swap the ball turret for the storage box actually. Um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but you can carry two SCU in that ball turret. If you wanted to, you could also swap out that entire ball turret for the um, radar scanner that is, is found on the tracker, making this a great addition to IE a explorer ship like the Odyssey, which is why I bought the tracker because I will be using it in my Odyssey to help with that scanning array which the Odyssey lacks in comparison to something like the Carrick. So modularity is a big part of this hull and will become extremely useful in the future. Not to mention that the Super Hornet variant out of all of the Hornets is the most heavily armoured and it can almost certainly take a beating and when armour does eventually make its way into the verse then Having a super tanky, super powerful, super quick with a co-pilot sp uh, spaceship medium fighter is almost certainly going to pay dividends in whatever profession you're trying to do throughout the verse. I personally feel that the gimbaled loadout for this ship is perfect for me and dogfighting. Gimbals are always the way to go, but if you're into taking down bigger prey, for example, I would probably swap the missiles for two size twos, uh, four size twos, sorry, change the missile wreck and have the fixed gun emplacements and then you will significantly increase the DPS of this ship, um, which is never a bad thing. So what we'll do now guys is take a look at the weapons and components if you choose to buy this ship either with real money or in game. In game it's around 2 million alpha UEC, 2 million 132,000 I believe. Um, so we'll take a look at the components as you can see here we have made our way to Elroy's we have an NPC who is let's just pretend that he's cleaning the ceiling and we'll take a seat and then begin our little look at what you can expect to get with the stock Hornet and it is a fun little ship to customize there are many options you can do with the Hornet hull okay so we have the bald turret and flare items here which is cool um, but we'll start with coolers so as you can see we have the braces equipped which are size 1 grade 3 military all the components will be military which is awesome because Super Hornet needs it um, power plant we have the Regulus which is a side one, size 1 grade 3 again military from Aegis Dynamics I have not felt the need to change the power plant if I'm honest the quantum drive is the EOS from RSI that is a size 1 grade 3 um, I would probably swap that for an Atlas again I tend to go Atlas is my go-to for ships just uh, for fighter ships just because it gives the extended range takes longer but probably saves time in the long run without without you constantly having to refuel shield generators we do get two and they are the all stop size 1 grade 3 militaries um, right so let's talk about weapons we get the MSD 341 missile rack size 3 grade 1 um, which is the stock missile rack and that contains within it size 1 grade 1 marksman infrared missile so heat seekers and we get 8 of those um, I would swap those. I think I would swap them for four size twos, in my opinion. On the top, we have the Hornet Ball Turret, and that is equipped with badges, two size twos, um, which are, yeah, there we go. Size two, grade one, from Klaus and Werner, laser repeater. Um, 
I haven't got an issue with these weapons at all. Like I said, I actually prefer the gimbaled. If I was to change things, it would be the Gatlings. We have the nose turret, and that is equipped with the following Bulldog repeaters. Which are size 1, okay? They still put out a decent amount of DPS, so... Again, I have not felt the need to change these. I do prefer the gimbals. I just think for dogfighting, it makes life a little bit easier. Um, in the future, I think I will probably experiment with an all-cannon Hornet, because I think that is the way to go. For good times, I think cannons are the way to go. Under the wings, we get size two, grade one, the uh, Scorpion Gatling guns. Which, again, I think, for me, I'm going to look into cannons for that. Distortions, possibly. More than likely cannons. Distortions are my Drake Buccaneer loadout. So there are the basic stock weapons and components for the Hornet. What we will do now, guys, is, of course, begin our walk around around the vessel. We're in a hangar. I normally don't do it in a hangar, but the Crusader hangars are so beautifully well lit it's a great place to showcase these ships compared to other hangars um, Crusader hangars are my favorite Crusader is my favorite area by a long chalk um, it's just beautiful place to be I think you'll agree um, very close between this and Microtech anyway so as you can see the Hornet dripping in weapons tricycle landing gear we have the chaff and flare dispensers well chaff and noise it's really flares and chaff you chaff and noise flare chaff noise noisy chaff flare at the back we have this monstrous engine which actually was originally designed as a racing engine so that's really cool i did not know that and now you know that as well if you didn't already um love the twin boom um tail and single engine it's adequate the power plant's adequate like i said i have not changed anything on this ship um I will change the Gatlings. That is the only issue I have with this stock loadout. It is really well armoured. This ship can it's a flying tank as far as I'm concerned. And that is a huge positive against the Scorpius, I think. I don't think the Scorpius is going to be anywhere near as um, resilient as the Hornet. So that, for me, will be a key selling point to the Super Hornet. Now you can see it's got like a double wing system, which helps it in atmosphere. And the wings do fold in and retract during takeoff and landing to save space, which is great. That's a great idea. We move around to the front of the vessel. You can see we have this um, turret, chin turret, which is gimbaled. And you can see the little sort of um, pivot point in the middle there with the two bulldogs. And it's just a great looking ship. Really like the paint scheme. Bright white. It looks clean. It looks modern. It looks cool. Um, we have those massive intakes there we have some more at the back underneath the ball turret area this is the module area of the ship where you're going to be able to swap mix and match due to what you want to do in and around the verse so versatility it's well armed it's well armored it's got an excellent combat history it's got excellent pedigree there are different variants it's at an excellent price um, it handles very well in atmosphere and in space so it's got a lot going for it guys honestly so let's hop into the cockpit then, and uh, we're at the back seat here, um, and it's very dark. Very dark indeed. So I think what I would do is probably the sensible thing to do would be to jump out, because we can't see anything, and then we'll get into the front, turn the ship on, and then we'll get back into the back. Sorry guys for wasting your time. Um, I didn't mean to jump in the back, but um, these things happen. I'm only human, sort of. A little bit. So, right. Uh, well, at least I've demonstrated to you that Pilot and CPG used the same ladder to get in and out, so you will have to take turns. Both um, seats are equipped with ejection seats as well, so that is excellent. Should you need to punch out, you can both do so. So, in the pilot seat, then, excellent MFDs, easy to read, well placed. We have that flight stick monitor we have multiple buttons switches all with various functions it's really cool in here I really like it we do have um, the remote turret access from here as well 
so the pilot can actually control the turret on the ground, which is great for protecting the ship. If the pilot had to go run an errand or capture a bounty, then the ship is still protected. Uh, that's a great idea. Two MFDs at the top here with our um, various warning um, lights located across the top. And the view is fine. I know we've got some struts, but it's really not that big an issue at all. It's really well spaced out. The visibility is not affected as badly as you might think. Um, I have no issues with it. I'm certain Hornet pilots already have no issue with it. Um, I don't really have any real complaints with the cockpit and the visibility. Uh, it does the job. We have the radar located just above the flight stick there. So very nicely done. And what we'll do now is, of course, hop back out to hop back in so I can show you what the CPG co-pilot gunner will be doing and what he has in the back at his disposal. So back in we go. Okay, so he gets the one stick. He does get, I've noticed, a HOTAS system as well. So I think the pilot, um, sorry, co-pilot can operate the ship from the back as well. Um, we have the power on button down here. Not as many buttons as the pilot as you would expect, but we do get to get in the turret. So let's take this around. So this becomes super useful now. Pilot engaging multiple targets, one or two. There's someone trying to maneuver onto your six. You have the ability to, f to defend this ship with a CPG in the back. And I can see some other uses as well. If you're tracking a bounty and we do get that secure seat in the future, the pilot jumps out, arms up, and he's off to track down his bounty. The CPG can stay here and protect the ship and operate it should the occasion arise but as you can see great 360 review we get towards the rear of the ship the turret has to point up because of the way of the twin boom um, sort of angles up towards the sky but overall a very good weapon system for another individual to control so i think overall i really enjoy the two-man aspect of the hornet the super hornet it is a glorious ship it looks great it's crisp it's clean it's a tank it fires like a tank it's manoeuvrable enough for its weight and size to deal damage to most things. Just a great ship, guys. So, I thoroughly enjoy it. I would consider getting one if I were you. It's only 2 million credits, which isn't too bad at all. I think that's a really respectable price. So, there we go, guys. That was my video on the Anvil Super Hornet. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, you know what buttons to press. And I will have more Star Citizen content en route to your location very soon. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.